Hello and welcome back to Aspen Talks Health. I am Dr. Nicola and today we are talking about clean energy and clean transportation. Today joining me is Matt Schmigelski. He is with CLEAR, which is clean energy economy. For the region. For the region. And he is the transportation director there. We're going to discuss how we can shift our transportation to more clean options and what it takes to lower those emissions and what it takes for the, to shift our government in this direction. So I'm very excited to have you on the show. Likewise. Thanks, Nicola. Thank you for joining yeah. me. So uh, tell us about CLEAR. CLEAR is a, a nonprofit. We're based in Carbondale, Colorado, just down the road. And we've been in existence for about 10 years, really focused on transportation, at least from the, the inception of the, the organization. And then we've broadened to include uh, work in buildings and renewables uh, and transitioning to a clean economy. So decarbonizing our world, our energy systems and our buildings, and most importantly, I like to think, uh, our transportation systems. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is it about our transportation? Are there specific emissions that we need to be concerned about? Transportation is one of the more challenging aspects of, of decarbonizing our, our system, our energy systems, because it's um, more dispersed, more, there's no central acting group that, that can influence those things mm. uh, in a transition to, to clean options. Um, and of course, you know, our traditional systems are all petroleum based, so right. um, all the emissions that are associated with combusting diesel and gasoline across the board have uh, a big impact and is a big component. It's actually the largest um, component of carbon emissions. Uh, it now exceeds utilities. And just that transition or that, um, that changed here in the last year or so. Wow. So it is a really important part of, of the puzzle here, trying to, to work towards this clean, clean system, clean energy. Do you have faith that we can? Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's what I do day in, day out. Yeah. And uh, I think we're super fortunate to be in um, a really good position here in, in Colorado specifically, uh, and then the technology side. So, you know, a lot of these aspects is having the technology available to, to actually do what we hope to do. So hope to decarbonize our system. So that is um, one of the more exciting aspects of, of where we're at today is, is that um, it's changing rapidly. Nice. A lot more options available, and they're all getting cheaper, which is um, probably the, the most important. important piece. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but the governments are listening. You're saying Colorado especially. You told Absolutely. me that Aspen is clean? Aspen's grid has been 100% has been renewable for some time now, a number wow. of years, which is exciting. Yeah, That's amazing. Kind of led the forefront in the whole country, actually, to, uh, to achieve that. And just in the last um, two weeks or three weeks, we, we've seen a large transition, or at least announcements of transitions from some of the largest utilities in, in the country and, and in Colorado as well. So Excel Energy... Uh, serves, I'm not sure the percent, but uh, a couple million customers in Colorado, and they announced that they're going to be carbon free by 2050. So, nice. one of the largest utilities to actually make that um, a priority and, and map out that in the entire country. And then, similarly, Holy Cross, who serves a lot of the valley, is doing the same thing. So, 70 by 30 was their plan, so 70% renewable by 2030. So it's excellent. Yeah, it's speeding up. There's a lot of exciting announcements. It's good to hear that the bigger companies are, are taking this on because I'm sure there was quite a bit of pushback from the petroleum companies for a while. There is. Yeah, I think there's um, Not the to economics. Get too political. Yeah, right. <laughs> Trying to avoid that. That's a tough one. But the, the economics are driving it. So uh, what was something that we really didn't envision or didn't, didn't think was possible maybe two years ago or three years ago is now coming at a really rapid pace. So in the case of Excel, they had um, presented a, a plan to become 55% renewable about 18 months ago to the governing agency, the Utility Commission in Colorado. And that was exciting. Wow. And then fast forward to today and two weeks ago, they ripped essentially that plan up and said that's um, we can do better and and they're moving even more rapidly than they were 18 months ago so 
Fantastic. So that's half the puzzle is is the the upstream side. So I know that's yeah. one of the big questions that folks have is is our electric cars cleaner, uh, mm -hmm. electric um, transportation options cleaner, and um, and we can definitively point to the fact that our grid is going to be carbon free, um, and it's mapped out to to achieve that. And so at that point, you, it's hands down. You know, more uh, sustainable and, and cleaner because you eliminate the entire upstream emission side and, um, and so a, an electric option becomes totally carbon free at that point. Explain that. What does carbon free mean? How, how is it? Are they st they're still burning gas to create the electricity? I, I'm sure that's the... So oh. there's a, it is a complex system. Yeah, electricity, the, the grid is um, made up of a whole bunch of different um, generation uh, components. So, you know, that what they call baseload generation. So, what kind of takes us through um, the bulk of the day and night on a sort of daily basis. And then there's other components that make up the uh, the other side. So, what when we turn stuff on, when we get up in the morning, the snow making devi you know, devices that come on uh, when they need those make up um, some of the the variable load. And so, that is comprised of other of other resources so either natural gas as you indicated some gas fired yeah. um, production okay. or renewables and those sorts of things so those kind of make up the mix um, to get to carbon free is is a big question yeah I think that's that's a piece of what we do at our organization is to to help them at the utility side and bring community partners together to to help identify what opportunities exist and where do we put solar and and those sorts of things to, to help get to that carbon, carbon free environment. That would environment. be amazing. Yeah. And what would it take to get the grid going? It is nationwide, right? Mm. Obviously, it, right. that's a big system to yeah. put in place. So, so that there are pumps everywhere that have electricity, right? Right, that, right. Yeah, so this transition to, um, to electric mobility is, is one of the terms out there, um, is a wholesale change to how we operate and we've operated for over 100 years. I think there's some, somewhere in the order of 16,000 gas stations in, in the U.S. And so it's not that took 100 years to get to the point we are today. And it's a seamless uh, process that we don't really have to think about it right. when we drive around. So we are transitioning. And that transition requires a whole new environment. So um, the interesting thing is it's, it's a different um, sort of approach. You're, it's more like we refer to it as your how you charge up your cell phone. So right. it's something you don't necessarily leave it unplugged and let it go all the way to zero and then re recharge it. You kind of you keep it constantly charged and and so that you can make phone calls and do everything right. that we do on on smartphones. So in the same way, that's how the electric world will work. So it'll be just constantly as you're uh, driving around and going to meetings and picking up kids or whatever the nature of your day consists of, yeah. it'll be having plugs available and having them at the Whole Foods and having them at your bank and those sorts of things. So, so that's where we play. So we're, yeah. we're working with all those partners to say, hey, you guys should look at this. This is something to consider and get the infrastructure built out so that we can support it. It sounds so fun. I would envision it in parking lots, in parking garages. Yeah. Maybe yeah, in each absolutely. spot, it seems yep. the most rational spot place. Yeah. Anyway, sitting there idle. Right, right. Yeah, so it, uh, it is going to take that level. And we're just on the cusp of this. Um, it's really starting to, to, to take hold and, and the um, economies of scale and all those sorts of things are, are playing out. So yeah. a lot of people are probably familiar that you know Tesla released their yeah. affordable, their affordable electric uh, sedan. Um, How much is affordable? Affordable is you know a starting price in the I think the mid 40s. Okay. And then we are super fortunate in Colorado to have uh, the best tax credits in the whole country. So you actually uh, are able to reduce that cost significantly. And nice. In Colorado, it's a five thousand dollar credit and then um, there's a federal tax credit as well so it brings it down to the to the thirty thousand dollar range which is comparable to wow. to uh 
to other options. That's out there. doable. Yeah. Fantastic. It is. And are the cars fast and yeah, they're, are they sexy? Or right. They yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. It, uh, it is all the above. That's what I think has made Tesla such a known brand and why they've been able to build such a, a strong reputation is the the tech the the product that they make is is all of that it's it's sexy it's fast it works it's cheap to, uh, to run which is the other aspect i think that's why i, I let it off that I don't, it's not a question of if this, this happens it's a matter of when because the technology is just it's so much um so much better than than gas gas uh, yeah. combustion it's it's faster, it's it's cleaner, it's cheaper, it's all those things. And it's silent. And it's silent. Yeah, on top of it. So it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I had a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Not exactly hundred percent electric, but still you couldn't even tell if it was on. It was right. Like, it was wonderful. Yeah. 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 It's fun. I'd get in a in a normal car now and I'm like, yeah. man, it's so noisy. How do I how do you <laughs> put up with this? So what are some of the other benefits? Uh, you had mentioned no oil changes. Right. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. Maintenance virtually goes away uh, you know gas cars have this giant engine it has 4,000 moving parts um, that break eventually right. um, and electric cars have none of that so they it's a direct connection essentially you know the, the battery provides the the power to the the motor that drives the wheels and that's, and it. that's it so <laughs> um, so no oil changes there's you know a lot of that service stuff and um, and then Brakes, brake uh, repairs kind of go away. Brake maintenance because your the motor actually acts as a, a generator. So when you in a hybrid as well, huh. um, when you slow down, it it's called regen. It goes into regen mode, and um, and so what that actually is doing is is reversing the motor. So the motor captures that energy and, and puts it back into the battery. So. Oh, wow. So that slows you down. So that captures most of the energy from whatever speed you're at down to just like five miles an hour until you, you get to the, the brake pads actually need to, to stop you for that last little bit. So, huh, that's so then, that should make, make your distance longer as well like you're, if you're charging your yeah, battery while you drive. Yeah, it does capture uh, some of that energy. So it's kind of, huh. I know around the valley, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really fun because you actually, as you're going back down, you actually um, capture some of that energy that nice. would normally just get get wasted. So, I love it. That's wonderful. Uh, so, what's the argument against it? The argument against it, yeah, is um, you know I think there's a lot of not to get too political. You know, a lot of vested interests. We built this industry around um, around petroleum production and and refining and. And distribution, and so there's inertia associated with change in any industry, uh, any market. So I think there's that dynamic is is one that that we run up against. That it's easier to stay with what you know, and and uh, and all the the uh, the different businesses and such that are associated with it. So it is it's an interesting dynamic. I know I was sitting down with some some fleet folks this last week more in the school bus world and and it is it's going to have to change you, you know these the folks in that world have been trained to work on a certain type of technology and and that technology is is really is going to start to to go away so okay. what we do need to think about that what what do we how do we help those folks transition what sort of uh, training might be helpful um, yeah. to to help transition that world so that's one aspect. I'm sure there's a number of ones, <laughs> yeah. other uh, other um, reasons why we continue to to uh, to have petroleum as our dominant sort of transportation fuel. Yeah, when we talked on the phone, you had mentioned changing, shifting the behavior relies on making it easy. So, like mm -hmm. you were saying, filling filling the gas, filling the mm -hmm. gas, right. filling the battery, yeah. charging stations, um, understanding why it's important. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. really explaining to people that yeah. the effects of the emissions on their own health, let alone the environment. Right, right. Uh, and then 
shifting that mind frame from it's it's not just a glorified golf cart you yeah, say. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> to an actually like fast and sexy mm -hmm, car. Like, mm -hmm. thank goodness for Tesla. He's doing a great job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they, they really set the, the benchmark in terms of, um, of the technology. Um, but we're seeing a lot of the other, what we call OEMs, the other manufacturers and the, the auto industries are, are moving this direction. So we've uh, had a number of different options out there. They've been in, in terms of electric vehicles and, and they've been on the limited side in terms of range. And so uh, I think we're right at the point where that's shifting. So the cost of the batteries have dropped significantly. So now they can make vehicles that are cost competitive. So we're seeing um, Audis having all electric SUVs mm -hmm. and uh, Chevy's had uh, a sedan out for a little while hatchback. And then all the other players, the, the Mercedes and Hyundai Toyota. and Toyota. Yeah. Um, are all moving this direction. So, um, so yeah, I encourage Excellent. folks to to uh, to take a look at the technology and and more importantly, probably get in the driver's seat. Yeah, and, test drive one. And right? Test drive one because yeah. um, it really I think showcases what why it makes sense when you can uh, experience it. So, yeah, is there a big difference between hybrid and electric driving wise? The experience right. of it wise, um, they're they're Typically is so. It's a great point. You know, we there's a lot of different terminology that's thrown out there. Um, hybrid is one. Then there's plug-in hybrid, and then there's um, what we traditionally call electric vehicle. But you know, in the industry, maybe battery electric vehicle is, is another terminology for it. But um, so hybrid has the combination of of a gas engine, and then has a battery that can sort of either boost or yeah or even drive exclusively on electricity for some duration. So um, so you have the combination of those two. And the benefit of that is is you have unlimited range. So you have a gas engine. Uh. You can refill it with our traditional fueling, gasoline, that's so easily accessible, border to border. Um, but you know, with that comes maintenance. So you, yeah. you're, you're having to maintain two different systems. So um, we see at least we hope that the transition will, will move more towards the 100% electric world because you're able to eliminate both on the maintenance side, but then you're driving exclusively on electricity. And so you're yeah. really able to capture a lot of those emissions, uh, savings and reductions. So Nice. Yeah. Nice. What are some of the policy changes that you think need to happen? There is uh, some movement here in the state of Colorado uh, to adopt the California emission standard. So California has set the, the bar, I would say, in terms of uh, emissions rules. Uh, it's what's called the zero emission standard, the ZEV standard. And so um, the former governor, Governor Hickenlooper, had uh, requested that the Department of Public Health and Environment at the state level uh, take up that uh, issue and um, and see if adoption of that rule would uh, would work and and be something that the state of Colorado would benefit from. So that's underway currently, Good. and uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's the first uh, state in the entire country to to do. Or sorry, the first inner mountain states to do that. There's uh, 12 states that have adopted it all on the West Coast and all on the East Coast Excellent. and the Northeast. So it would be, uh, I think, a landmark um, thing to have Colorado uh, adopt that. And, and what that does is it moves uh, Colorado up to um, sort of the front of the, the pack in terms of how vehicles uh, are in the electric vehicle space are, um, are allocated. So the manufacturers uh, traditionally are, are building electric cars as um, sort of a side component or, or a smaller component of their manufacturing base. So they, um, they look to this, those environments that are naturally more suitable or, or you know, have uh, better reception. So that's where those rulings and, and that process will um, ensure that, that the Colorado auto market is, is one that um, is able to get 
the newest and and um, and best electric vehicles. You know, Subaru is one that has been highlighted. They've got a, a plug-in hybrid that they are are working on, and hmm. and of course, as we know in Colorado, the Subaru is is by far probably the most popular vehicle in the, in the state. So, if we can ensure that 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 vehicle is is in this market, I think um, that benefits nice. uh, Coloradans. So, uh, it seems natural. Coloradans yeah. are very into nature and protection mm. and and the environment. So it's it seems like that's the natural way to go. Yeah, yeah I would agree. Yeah, we uh, are most of us are are here because of the lifestyle. So ensuring that we can continue to enjoy it and ski and bike right. and, and all that good stuff. So that definitely at a wider sort of viewpoint, it th that plays into how do we as individual citizens uh, and consumers help to shift and and do our part to, to, um, to help out on that front and be more sustainable and, and reduce our impacts and that sort of stuff. I know it's from my own perspective, you know, it's it's a big, uh, it's a big topic: climate change and and decarbonization, those sorts of things. And it's it's hard as an individual to to see where you can have an impact. And um, and I think that's really one very tangible and very impactful way that we all can can do our part uh, to um, to help. Yeah. Out. So, so just buying an electric car, but there's also, yeah. is there reaching out to some of your elect electives? Yeah, yeah. I mean, officials? I think supporting the dialogue, you know, we, we've talked a lot about the just the consumer side, so the sedans and the SUVs and that sort of stuff, but um, this technology is, is playing out in other markets too, so the Rowan Fort Transportation Authority is, mm. is one that has... Um, has started to make this transition, so they're uh, they've got eight buses that they're going to purchase and have funding to purchase to start things off, and, and those will be 100% electric uh, transit buses. So nice. That is a whole other aspect of this, and so supporting that effort, and and um, and the voters did already do that. You know, a lot of voters probably watching Good. were. Um, we're, we're able to participate and pers participate in the last uh, last election, and, and RAFTA had a, a ballot initiative that um, helped to fund the uh, the purchase and future sort of um, shift to electrification. Right. So, Good. Yeah. Are there any other areas? There's the tra public transportation, personal transportation. Yeah. Is there anything else? It's amazing. It's it's crossing all over. Um, Every market, yeah, yeah. So school buses is another one that we're really focused on. So we're can what a great way to use the technology to have kids that are waiting for the school bus, yeah. and you can just picture the the diesel buses that pulls up and and uh, and pulls away with this giant plume of of um, emissions that are you right. know just you by far don't want your kids having to breathe that so. Uh, so it has that really direct yeah. connection, and then of course, you know, any way that we can support our schools, and in terms of, um, they're always, in a, in a position to 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 be able to use their finite funds and yeah. uh, in a way that can, you know, teach Benefit. and support kids' education rather than having to spe spend it on fueling buses and that sort of stuff. So there's uh, some really big benefits. So I'm excited about that market and it's really just at the cusp as well so we're nice we're hopeful to get some pilots and get this, the local school districts here to, to implement it so nice um, a question popped into my head before that um, switching back and forth a little bit but um, how much would your electricity bill go up mm. per se if you were plugging right. your car, car yeah at, that's a great home? question so electric cars are roughly six or seven times more efficient so in terms of energy, it gets a little wonky, of course, but um, but what you can kind of equate that to is in the gas world, you put a gallon in and about like 14% or 15% of that actually moves the car. So all wow. the rest is just heat loss and and friction and all that stuff, transferring that energy to that to motion. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. 14%. And, yeah, somewhere in that range, yeah, 14, 15%. And, um, 
in the electric world, you're talking 70, 80% roughly. Fantastic. How efficient it is. So, um, so that's where you get a lot of savings. So you're not yeah. having, you're not spending money on, on energy essentially in the gas world, yeah. especially that you're, that gets lost. So, uh, in the electric world, you, you benefit sense. from that efficiency. And so, um, so yeah, so it's you know in the case I've been driving a, an electric for a few years and I would um, hope so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the director <laughs> of transportation. Um, <laughs> so you know a few hundred dollars typically. So like a a normal person that that drives fifteen thousand miles a year probably spends in the order of um, you know maybe two thousand dollars depending on the gas cost of gas, but a thousand gallons at twenty something miles per gallon, and so. So you could reduce that by six or seven. So you get, you know, in the range of three or four hundred dollars a year. And and the nice thing is it's um, it's typically either at your house overnight, yeah. and so you don't have to think about charging it and and paying those bills. Uh, in the gas world, you can just um, it's included in your electric bill. And nice. and a lot of the utilities are supportive of this. Holy Cross is is one that has been extremely supportive of this market and I think it makes sense here you get to uh, sell more of your product electricity and um, and support a whole new market that hasn't existed so nice yeah we have one minute left is there any okay. final words that you want to share with the community of, of right um, yeah like you had indicated you know supporting efforts as much as you can and, and getting if you do drive an electric vehicle already you know sharing your experience with your friends and neighbors yeah um, I think is the biggest way and and it's not a foregone conclusion I would say too um, that um, we do consumers have probably the biggest say in terms of what products are are brought right. to market so um, if we as consumers continue to say hey you know a a large SUV or whatever type of vehicle is 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 what uh, I need or, or what I'll consistently buy, yeah. then that's what'll be made. So I would say definitely taking the initiative and and checking the technology out and um, and making the decision to to pull the gas gas cord, not, not have to use gas anymore. So. Excellent. All right, well, I'm sorry yeah. that we run out of time. It was wonderful seeing yeah. with you. Thank you for sharing what you're doing, and thank you for doing what you're yeah, doing. I you. appreciate, everyone appreciates you fighting for this because it's very important for the environment. Um, yeah, and thank you Thanks. very much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. It was a pleasure. As always, you guys, check out Aspen Talks Health for more information, and I will put Matt's contact info and your website where they can find out more information as well. All right, thanks for tuning in, you guys.